Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Uh, today's sneaker series is in about Easy Quest by Billo and installing it and integrating it into the Survival Game Kit version 2. And without further ado, let's jump in. Um, add the Easy Quest asset. It's a free download off the marketplace. Add Easy Quest into your project. Open it on up. This is what you'll see in the blueprint. Easy quests. Go to blueprints. You're going to open the quest character. And then you're also going to want to go to survival game kit blueprint character. Master character, which is the one that will be there if you're on a new copy. But whatever character you have, I've uh, copied, duplicated it, and then um, work with one. So I don't mess up the master character. <laughs> okay, so first thing you want to do, it's not in here already, good, is add your quest component, the PC player quest component. Go ahead and do that. Go to class settings, add BPI quests. I'm actually going to take it out and add it again. Because I reinstalling it. All right, and then that's your class settings. Then you'll want to go to the event. Um, this is just your character. Um, I suggest just getting rid of this movement stuff from the character, so he has no issues. If you want, if you hold on to him or keep him around somehow, not get rid of him. Take the one quest node that's left, copy it, go back to your event graph. Now you notice Survival Game Kit has all these really organized event graphs, and this is all the stuff that I've added in. I click on the event graph, Control C to put the quest node there. Make sure you take that quest node out. That's always best just to do that. Find out all of your errors of your ways go ahead and hit uh, create variable on the gold the level open up your quest node click create variables on experience needed experience level gold hit that there we'll still have a few more you'll want to go to your functions go to your quest node functions grab add goal bring it out get rid of this old one bring it round on up go ahead and click add experience grab that let it all uh, compile and now we're going to move to Mouse input. All right, we want to grab. It's a function actually, so we'll go um, to our quest character. Click on mouse input. Copy. Go to your survival game kit. Hit function. Paste function. And compile real quick. So then you can go back to your quest node. You can grab your function mouse input and add it right in there. Compile on that and we'll I'm gonna go to your player quest compile. I was like, wait, what is that? And uh, add it in off there. This is the one that you're transferring out of. You'll find two of them. Go ahead and Change it out with the new one that you put into your character there. Get mouse visibility. I think we've got to make this a variable. There we go. Interaction range. Another variable we need to make. Great variable there. Once you do that, you might want to go here. Set it to around 200 so you're not 
up in the face of the NPC here because in Survival Game Kit, we use E for leaning and F for um, talking and doing things, picking up stuff. We'll use K there for, we'll change this to P. You can change it to any key you want, but the reason we do that is because K is for kill in Survival Game Kit. We'll compile that and we're all good to go. You see, we've got our experience gold, XP, um, BP player quest control, right? Survival game kit, survival game kit, BP custom event, just the way it's supposed to look like that. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is open our widgets in survival game kit, blueprint widgets. Go down to inventory HUD and open it up. And then go back to example map, go to easy quest, go to your widgets, go to quest widget. And in quest widget, you're going to want to copy this widget right here. And while you're at it, delete it from this widget. Compile and save and close it out. Go back to your inventory HUD. Look on HUD canvas panel and paste it right in there. You'll see it comes up in the top. And move it on down to wherever you need. We're going to put ours right down here. Kind of fit. I'm going to overlap this a little bit because we're only using four slots and not six. So it takes these four. We'll get it right there in the middle. Compile that. The reason we do this is so that when we uh, tab in and out, this tabs in and out with the inventory menu. It doesn't stay up there. Same thing with the, with the uh, traced um, node, but for right now, we're going to leave it as in. So we'll save that inventory HUD. I think that we're done with that. We might be done with our master character. We might be done with our quest character and now we're going to go to easy quest blueprints and bp npc we'll drag that out onto the map and then we're going to open data tables we're going to open the data table that's in here and you'll see that working with the data table has two important things they're all important but two important things in order to put onto your npcs or onto your objects is the quest id First quest and the objective ID. Okay, you'll notice that objectives, you can add different indexes, and the first one is collect apples. And then it tells you in the description you can collect five apples. These are some tips so you can add a few extra lines if you like, what you're gonna get, how how many you have, how many required. Does it have a world marker? Yes or no? So if you want people to see where it is and go to it, you click that on. If you want them to find it and search for it, you click that off. If your objective is complete, another quest. If this is true, it will add, it will, it, once you have um, completed the collect five apples, it will add another quest automatically. And this is where you would put the quest ID which would be first, second, third, fourth, which is different than your quest objective ID because that's under the same first quest. So you'll see that when you open these other two, it says has world marker, doesn't have a quest ID. This last one doesn't have a quest ID either. So by the time you can abort, and if you fill this out right here, under required uh, quests, you would add a field here and put the required one there. Then what would happen is as soon as you finish the quest and you hit required, object to complete, required another one, you put the quest ID there, quest to, here you would put quest to, and as soon as it would finish, it would show you the next quest without you going back to the NPC to get another quest. 
So we're going to um, turn that off. Take that out right there and leave it as it is just for the demo. So the first one it says is collect apples and first quest. So we go back to our NPC over here on the side under your details panel. You're going to want to find, scroll down, and you'll see where it says Quest Giver. IDs to process. Now, the reason this is, this is a little different than the other pieces, because this is a Quest Giver. All right, so he will give you the quest. The other NPCs are things you get in your quest. So they will have only ID and objective. So at the first, what you want to do is put first quest. All one word to match. The data table add a quest ID which is the first quest it'll make sense when you start to uh, work with the data tables and understand how you can add and change and customize it and right here we'll put collect apples and we go back to blueprints Go into in collectibles. Should be able to put that there. And now if you go into quest, you'll see that there is only quest ID and quest objective. The quest ID is collect apples. And the quest ID is first quest. All right. Go ahead and save that before we get going. So what we've done is we've put the component into our character. We've added, let's review. Make sure we've put the components in our character here. Interactive range, mouse visibility, experience needed in levels, yes. We've got our components, we've got our variables, we've got our interfaces. We'll save our character. Go back to our map. Now, before we make these guys out of this discovery box that we have on our map, right, full screen maestro. And you'll notice that he has a question exclamation part over his head so you can go talk to him get up close hit f and it shows a hey, new beginning track the quest it says tab but we're using p we hit p brings up our quest which uh is where our level was before we hit that says collect five apples give it gives us experience gold basic sword apples basic plate or we can abort the quest. Now on the quest type over here, of course, there's all main quests, side quests. This is a main quest, so it shows up. Completed quest, we've got none, and we have not aborted any. So when we go to all beginning, and we'll go like that. You'll see that on the screen there, now it says the beginning, collect five apples. Well, we only have one. And it did not say collect an apple. Hmm. He is our apple man. Now uh, he's he uh, collected the apple. Now it's killed the thug. We didn't bring our thug out. So let's. So as you can see, it showed our level, it showed our our gold, it showed our progress, it uh, updated our progress. If we are now to start again, first thing we'll do though is we'll put our uh, BP in enemy. Let's kill the thug. And you'll notice over here it's just a quest objective and the quest ID. Now these are backwards, right? I think that's what I did wrong here. This no, this quest type G and objective is, is set, but his is backward for some reason. So the quest objective is kill. What was our objective? Our second objective was to kill the thug. And we'll copy that from the data table. 
Go back to our kill sub. Objective ID. Copy and paste that right in there. And this is part of our first quest. So you see our first quest has multiple things to do. So you can have your quest have one thing to do, like go to an area. As soon as you get there, bling, bling, bling. It says, oh, you've discovered this area. It gives you a reward. You can set it so that it automatically gives you another one and tells you to go somewhere else or see someone or pick something up. So it's quite versatile. Now we've put that in there. Now let's see by starting and hitting F11 Maestro, you'll see that it, we are still it is saved from previous the amount of kills. Now we're still at Kill a Thug. We didn't start over at see the NPC. So it does save as we go. And you'll notice there's our NPC, right? It says nearby because we have show world marker. And we'll go get him and it says now find and talk to NPC.